For years I've been saying that RFID technology is without doubt the biggest revolution in supply chain management that we've seen in the last decade, without a doubt. And, uh, um, and it seemed to me a no-brainer that Walmart would force it on and Pentagon would force it and so on. And as you know, there's been uh, all kinds of reactions to it in different places, but, but the cost savings are so monumental that for as far as I'm concerned, whatever the difficulties Walmart's had in getting their supply chain sorted with RFID, it's only a matter of time. It has to, it has to happen. Every single product, including this bottle of water, I know the logistical challenges and technical challenges, in, depending on the packaging of actually reading these things, but it's going to happen. Why? Because of these fantastic warehouse efficiencies, the reduction of theft to almost zero, the ability to locate every product, the ability to stop 10% of all Mac 4 razor blades disappearing in theft. 10% of the stock. It's one of the highest value thefts in the market is a box of Mac 4 razor blades, which can, which can come in at about 20 or 30,000 euros a shot. Um, and uh, yes, there are technical challenges, as I say. Yes, there are counterfeiting issues. Yes, there are security uh, issues. There are privacy issues. Uh, but, as I say, it's an unstoppable momentum as far as I'm concerned, and I know that you are passionate about this technology and you use it a lot. Um, and I guess the big issue is breaking out from the supply chain within, within the you know, manufacturing and wholesale and putting it actually onto the Philadelphia cheese or the, or the loaf of bread. And connected with that is another revolution which you've seen here in Germany, especially with the Metro Group, um, as you well know, with the advent of the self-service. We're into the self-service era, which cuts cost, um, and uh, barcodes are so last century. Who here has tried to do a self-service shop using barcoding? Was it an enjoyable experience? It's horrendous, ghastly. Um, and uh, what we really want is an end to checkouts, don't we? We just want to be able to walk into Walmart and say, oh, hello, sorry, I can't stop. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You just hit and run. You just take what you want, sorry, wherever they go. And why? Because the machine saw you coming, saw you coming down the street. And as you came in through the door, they know who you are. They know that you're in the store. They know exactly what you've got, and they know where to charge it. And if you know who I am, what I've got, and where to charge it, then you have a complete trading system. And the sheer genius of it is that it doesn't need to involve any bank. Because the next thing that happens is, bloop, SMS onto my mobile phone. Thanks for shopping at uh, Metro today. You've just been uh, charged 45 euros and 22 cents. And here's the list. Wonderful. And if it's a much more expensive thing, if I've just bought uh, a car, sorry, got to go, can't chat, then uh, what do I do? It's the same technology. The only difference is biometrics, one thumbprint. So SMS, press P to pay. P to pay, thumbprint, thumbprint, wait two seconds, corrected, validated, authenticated, the car is yours, sir. Can it be done? Yes, it can, using today's technology. We're wiring up mobile communications. In fact, the really exciting thing about this from the, from the banking point of view, well, actually, it's scary if you're a bank, it's really exciting if you're a mobile phone company, is the amount of money involved. You know, if you were just to take... Um, half of the normal commission on a credit card transaction, which is, say, 3%, um, and, and a little bit of extra stuff as well, uh, and you would take that out of all the money which you spend every month on credit cards, bank cards, and everything else as well. Think about how much that is. And I promise you, it becomes much more than you spend on a mobile phone at the moment. What, what it means is that a phone company could afford to give you the mobile phone. You say, promise me, you have to cut up your American Express card. Cut up your MasterCard and your Visa. It's gone, okay? If you promise that you will not use those cards anymore, except where biometrics isn't accepted. If you promise, then we promise you a free phone, free broadband, free satellite TV, free cable channels, free, uh, free video conferencing system, free whatever, you like, whatever else you want from us. Unlimited data, unlimited video calls, unlimited everything. Just please, please, please don't use American Express anymore. And the phone companies would make a big profit on that. So the days of phone companies selling phones is coming to an end. That's a crazy last century idea. Why would anyone want to sell you a phone? They'll give it to you, of course. 
And what's the value of the phone? It's simply a financial transaction machine, which has a few extras included for voice calls and email and personal life and all the rest and a camera and a video. So how does that connect with a self-service mass retail? How does it connect with RFID? Well, the phone has RFID inside it. The phone knows where it is. The products know where they are, or you know, you know how to locate them. And it's all welded into this exciting place which you are going to drive for the future, which is a place where every product is fixed in time in a place on the world's surface. We know exactly where it is, what it's been bought, who's bought it, where it was manufactured, and where it's going. And it doesn't matter whether it's a Michelin tire that tells us automatically that it needs replacing and automatically orders a new one from a factory. It doesn't matter whether it's a, a biometrics of passports. And why, why do we need passports anymore? That's crazy too. All I need is a tag and a biometric, and that's it. Um, uh, airline handling, of course, we're using RFID all over the place already in that. Shipping inspections and controls, it's the end of the bills of lading. Micromanagement of containers, because we can tag everything inside that container. I know if there's a lot of metal, it's hard. Um, but nevertheless, the principle is there. Clinical monitoring, we can actually use RFIDs inside the body to monitor what's happening inside your head, uh, inside your liver or your kidneys. Very exciting. So we can have remote diagnostics. And then, of course, you see, the future isn't about technology. It's about emotion. And so, of course, we then get an emotional reaction. And you may remember that there was a, a massive uh, uh, American boycott of Mac 3 razor blades a while back because there was a rumor, in fact, it was true, perfectly true, that Gillette had tagged all their razor blades and they put them in a special assembly uh, in, in the store. And if you removed a razor blade, the digital camera went gluck and sent a digital photograph to the security people. And the security people started following you around the store to make sure that you actually paid for that razor blade when you checked out. And because, the, um, because that caused a massive reaction about privacy, um, Gillette had, uh, well, it got worse, actually. Uh, Gillette uh, was, was already in trouble in the US, and suddenly, there was a boycott of all Mac 3 products across the whole of Australia because there was a rumour that Gillette had started tagging all the Australian razor blades as well. They hadn't, but despite that, um, there was a ban on them. The public just walked away. Um, and, and it wasn't just them. Um, uh, uh, old Benetton got hit. A Benetton started to tag just one type of trousers. And because they did built the tag into the trousers where it couldn't be seen, our people were worried that uh, they go down the street and someone with a scanner would say, <coughs> like the shoes, but <coughs> you know, because you see the scanner, you see, you tell where they bought it, what price they paid, I like the shoes, but mm, pity about the tie. And they said, well, I don't want that to happen. Or a woman's going down the street and there's a man on the bus and he's, he's scanning her handbag. He can read everything inside her handbag because it's all got tags. And so as people started to worry about privacy inf uh, and, and leakage of information, and, um, and then uh, people like Walmart started to really worry about whether they'd ever be able to tag things that actually go out into the retail market. Um, and uh, uh, th it's been a difficult area. And what's happened is clothing manufacturers alike and retailers like Marks and Spencers in the UK have found a middle way. You put the tag on the price label, the price label gets torn off and thrown. But you see, other manufacturers don't want it to be thrown. And manufacturers of a plasma TV set, they want the tag inside the TV. And they want it so you can't remove it. They want it as part of the guarantee machine uh, for, for the product. So uh, it's, a, it's a controversial area, but RFID is here to stay, and it will be a part of our lives. And we will have 100 billion of these grains of sands in our environment every single year. Every one of them will last up to 100 years in the environment. Every one of these grains of sand can receive data and send it. Every one of them doesn't need a battery because it sucks power out of the air. It's astonishing, this technology, um, and, and it will come.